ایکٹوپیا ویسائی کے از اے کنجنائٹل اینومیلی اور ٹو پٹ اٹ ان بیٹر ورڈس اٹ از اے پارٹ آف اے اسپیکٹرم آف اینومیلیز نون بائی ایکسٹروفی ایپیسپیڈیس کمپلیکس ٹو پٹ اٹ سمپلی دا بلیڈر از ناٹ ان اٹس نارمل پلیس ان دس کنڈیشن اینڈ ہیز ہرنیٹڈ آؤٹ تھرو اے ڈیفیکٹ ان دی اینٹیریئر ایبڈومینل وال دا ریزن وائی دس ہیپنس از The cloaca which was supposed to get good support from the mesoderm fails to get it. So, because of failure of development of mesoderm, there is a defect in the anterior abdominal wall and that is why the bladder protrudes out through it. Depending on the complexity of the disease, even bowel can herniate out through this defect. Extrophy of bladder often don't occur in isolation. There are other anomalies which can be associated with it. Like lower genitourinary tract anomalies like epispadias, poorly developed penile shaft and bifid clitoris. Vesicoureteric reflux is extremely common in these babies so should be actively searched as they can completely ruin the kidneys. So without waiting further we will go ahead and take a look at this topic in detail. Let's say a newborn presents with this situation. As a doctor we first try to make out the different parts. At the top we can see the umbilical stump. Just below it we can see a dark red structure. This structure is actually the bladder. Interestingly this bladder is inverted that is it is inside out and the bladder wall is also defective which means that the bladder is not closed all around like it should be it is actually very difficult for an inexperienced person to visualize the ureter in this case but it can be seen these are most probably the ureteric orifice because the bladder is open and inverted dribbling of urine can be seen the penis is below the reddish inverted bladder we can see the left and right corpus cavernosus which makes up the penis penis is short and wide if we look carefully we can see the urethral plate what we mean by urethral plate is that in this case the urethra has in formed a tube which it was supposed to make hence it presents like a flat laid out structure we can also appreciate that the scrotum is not in its normal position and is pushed down further this is obviously a male newborn The situation in a female newborn is slightly different but similar. Ectopia vesicae is more common in male newborns with an incidence of around 1 in 50,000 population. I have already said before that bladder extrophy or ectopia vesicae is a part of spectrum of congenital syndrome. called extrophy epispadias complex as it is a spectrum of disorder it will have the worst kind and the best kind on the left extreme the picture shows cloacal extrophy it is definitely the most complex of all three and the worst kind first we will take a look at the cartoon we can see that in this kind there is a prolapsed bowel on either side of the prolapsed bowel hemi bladder is present omphalocele can also be seen this basically means that bladder is divided so you can imagine how difficult it is going to be to repair this type of bladder the clinical situation 
which is indeterminate is classical bladder extrophy or ectopia vesicae. We have already understood the clinical situation in detail in the previous slide. Lastly, the picture on the right is the one which is least complex. It is just simple epispadias. In epispadias, the only abnormality which is present is that urethra is dorsally displaced. In case of female ectopia vesicae, the situation is slightly different and we need to discuss it. Just like in males, here too we have the umbilical cord and exposed bladder. The external genitalia can be seen in which the labia appears bifid, meaning it is not united in the midline. Just like the labia, clitoris too is bifid. In between the clitoris, the vaginal opening and urethra can be seen. The urethra is usually shallow and poorly formed. Lastly, the anus is upwardly displaced and is not in its usual location. After we have understood what everything is, we are now in a better position to understand the clinical photograph. Ectopia vesicae is associated with bony abnormalities too. There are various kinds. But the simplest one to understand is diastasis of pubic bone. Which means the pubic bone is not unified in the front and it is opened up. The reason why this information is important because in order to repair the defect, Sometimes the bones are cut to rearrange them. These are called osteotomies. Osteotomies are done so that the pubis bones can be joined in the midline anteriorly. Now we will take a look at the x-ray. We can clearly see that the diastasis of pubic bone is present in this x-ray. It is extremely evident. In this slide, the bony and muscular problems of bladder extrophy are depicted. We can clearly see that anteriorly the diastasis of pubic bone is present. This leads to deficiency of pelvis floor muscle anteriorly. After bony osteotomies, the bones are rotated forwards. This leads to sufficient muscular strength anteriorly. Lastly, we must know who these patients are who are at risk of this condition. Parents who have a family history of bladder extrophy should inform their healthcare officials so that they can be on the lookout for this condition. Artificial reproduction is very common nowadays and has become an established risk factor for the condition. Lastly, folate deficiency is also implicated in the development of bladder extrophy. This is a condition where antenatal detection is possible. Usually the filled bladder in a fetus can be detected by ultrasound. But if on repeated examination bladder filling is not detected then bladder extrophy can be suspected. The last thing we need to know about ectopia vesicae is treatment strategies. For treatment of this condition, there are two different approaches. One, a single stage repair and two, multiple stage repair. In single stage repair, only one single surgery is done to correct all the conditions. However, post-operatively, the incidence of urinary tract obstruction is more when this strategy is employed. 
This led to the switch to multiple staged repair. Here, surgeries are performed at different stages. So the problem with this approach is that many different surgeries are required. However, the incidence of post-operative urinary tract obstruction is less. With that, we come to the end of this session. Thank you so much. I really hope you enjoyed this lecture.